Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is time. It is time for... I don't know what it's time for. Guys, we're in luck. These things will be ready very soon. Just look at all that production we're getting. Absolutely insane on the cherry tomatoes. I really like the large red cherry. Looking forward to a fantab... I was gonna say fantabulous, but I caught myself because that'd be a really strange thing to say. You can see the beefsteaks are looking absolutely marvelous here in their row. Most of these are big beefs, and at the back, I do have one Italian special pair. This is a really funky variety I grew last year. Nice big beef cluster right here. You can see quite a good amount of tomatoes here. So for whatever reason, this row of string trellis beefsteak tomatoes isn't getting that tall this year. I uh, really don't know why. It's, I would say, currently at about four, four and a half feet tall. Maybe five feet for... No, no, it's not five feet. And I'm not sure why. Maybe my fertilizer recipe needs some work. But we still do have quite a few beefsteaks on the vines. And I also have the caged unpruned plants, which we're going to take a look at right now. So you can see here is my massive jungle of unpruned caged plants. And it's looking pretty good. There's a lot of tomatoes in there that you can't really see on camera just because they're hidden behind all the leaves. But let me see if I can get in here. There's a nice cluster of big beefs in here. Looking good. Looking fantastic. Looking green. And I want you to ripen up, so you're gonna ripen up for me, right? I also have an Italian special pair here. It's looking really good. Uh, I've got quite a few Italian special pairs in there, most of which can't really see because they're tucked behind the leaves, but this variety is quite massive, as you can see. Here's a nice big cluster right here. Looking good, the tomatoes are still pretty small, but it's end of July. They still have a bit of time to grow and develop, so hopefully they keep uh, pushing that size there and we'll get some beautiful Italian special pears out of this plant. So at the side here, I've got my pepper row. It's looking pretty good, getting decent production. You can see we're getting some bell peppers here that are really starting to fill in on the plants. For some reason, these bells are getting pretty long. So these plants in this little raised bed here were all from a seed pack that was a bell pepper mix. So I think it's a bunch of different varieties of California Wonder and they're different colors. I think there's yellow, orange, uh, red, and for some reason, there's also this strange looking purple variety. So this definitely does not look like a bell pepper to me. I think it's supposed to be a bell pepper, but definitely doesn't look like it. Got another plant over here. It just has these strange pointed purple fruits. They're kind of cool looking, but they don't look like bell peppers. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. Here at the back of the row, I've got all the hot peppers. So these are all supposed to be hot paper lantern habaneros, um, but one of them is not. There's no way it is. It's probably a cross because I saved these seeds from a previous generation. Uh, but let me show you what it looks like. This is the plant I'm talking about. It's got a bunch of these really nice looking pods. They have a really interesting shape to them, but they're most certainly not hot paper lantern habaneros. This is what hot paper lanterns are supposed to look like. You can see they're a lot smaller, um, more slender, pointier. And these are gonna ripen to a nice magma red color. More big beef tomatoes hidden. So I've noticed this season that the first cluster of tomatoes is really nice, really big. And then any of the other auxiliary clusters that are either up further on the vine or on the suckers do not really look that great. They're pretty small and they're not developing at the rate I think they should. So I don't really know what's going on there. If you have any tips or ideas, let me know in the comments section down below. I think it could be a fertilizer issue. Uh, I have been fertilizing once every two weeks approximately with uh, Bloom Booster 153015, which I think should have enough nitrogen and potassium and phosphorus to get those fruits boosted. Whew, I don't know why I'm so out of breath, guys. Need to get on that treadmill a bit more, I think. But yeah, I just wanted to come back to the cherry tomato row here and showcase the chocolate cherry because you can see we're starting to get some ripening tomatoes here. A nice chocolatey brown color. Of course, they're still on their journey of ripening up and I want to let the ripe fruits kind of stack up before I do any harvesting. That way we can really see how beautiful these tomato plants look. Uh, that'll happen probably late August, early September. So stick around if you're interested in seeing the harvest videos. So here is a potted hot paper lantern habanero. I've noticed one thing different with the uh, hot paper lanterns this year is that they're getting this kind of purple hue on the shoulders of the fruit. And I don't really know what's causing this. It's not necessarily you know, a bad thing, but it could indicate something awry. So again, I'm interested to hear if anyone's had this experience with their peppers and what did it mean for you? Look guys, I know I've been gardening for a long time 
and I'm pretty decent at it, but there are always things that crop up that are new to me. That's the thing that's so fun about gardening is that, you know, there's always a problem, an issue that you need to resolve. You need to figure out why is this happening? And I don't proclaim to be, you know, some expert who knows everything about gardening. There's always going to be things I don't know. And uh, that's just part of the process. But yeah, I seriously just can't get over the productivity on these large red cherry tomatoes. They're really stacking the clusters and uh, looking forward to the harvest on these ones. These are a little larger than your average cherry tomato. Uh, so if I were to throw these in a salad, I'd probably cut them in quarters just because of the size. I'm around six foot two and clearly the vines are uh, beating me in the height competition. I haven't topped them yet, and I honestly don't know if I will. I probably will soon, but yeah, the cherry tomatoes really get tall, especially if you prune them to single or double stack. I've also got a chocolate cherry growing in a pot, and it's doing okay. It's not doing as well as the in-ground plants, but that's to be expected. I'm not fertilizing these pots very uh, intensively, and I probably should be since it's mostly a soilless growing medium, meaning it doesn't contain nutrients. Uh, but I did throw in some composted cow manure and some triple mix, which obviously isn't supplying all the nutrients the plants need. But I've been kind of neglecting the potted plants. Uh, the in-ground garden is what I'm really focusing on this year. Look at these beef steaks. Looking great, guys. I also have some caged cherry tomato plants. Let's take a look. So this is a large red cherry. Doing pretty well, actually. It's got a lot of clusters stacking up. And again, it's kind of difficult to see on camera just all the clusters in here. But um, once they're all red, it's going to be a lot easier to see. For the end of July, I'd say the garden is looking great. I'm excited to see all the harvests we're going to be getting in the coming months. I hope you stick around. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you smash that like button. Let's get this channel to 100,000 subscribers. We're so close. Only about 35,000 away. See if we can make it happen. And uh, with that being said, if you have a great rest of your summer and check out some of my other videos. Also, you're awesome, you're cool, you're worthy.